Anytime you want to call, I'm here, my friend. Uh, yeah, just one thing. Yes. Just, it just stuck my head. Okay. So I'm debating, you know, one of my friends who's a Seventh-day Adventist. She oh, keeps yes. on saying that the Sabbath is Saturday. It's Saturday. Okay, say so, all right, and it's Saturday, eh? Yeah. And, and? Uh, why do you guys keep it on Sunday? Because as Christians who worship Jesus, who are born of the Spirit, who are spiritual Jews, we keep the true Sabbath. We keep the true Sabbath. Okay. You keep Israel Sabbath. You keep National Israel Sabbath. Okay, now, guys, he's asked me a question about the Sabbath day. Let me now answer that question. I've answered it previously, but I'll answer it again. You guys want me to answer that question? When a seven-day Adventist tells you, why don't you keep the Sabbath day? It's part of the Ten Commandments. They'll say, you keep nine out of the Ten Commandments. Why don't you keep all of them? We do keep all of them. Let me answer the question. For Arthur, everyone else, as long as you're not bored, am I boring you with my discussion, or is it... Blessing you, your understanding, even though it's late for some of you, you're getting it by the power of the Holy Spirit. My speech is clear by the power of the Holy Spirit because I'm here to serve you and I want to bore you and torture you. Now, yes, now here's your answer. Yes, we keep all ten commandments. Yes, we do keep the Sabbath. But here's what you do not say because this is the mistake of Christians. The Sabbath was changed to Sunday. They'll say, no, it wasn't. So Catholics, Coptic, Assyrian Church of the East, Orthodox, please do not use this argument. Do not say, well, the Sabbath is now Sunday. It was changed to Sunday. Do you know why? Do you know why you don't use that argument? Can I tell you why? Do you know why? Because they'll tell you, show me in the New Testament one verse in the New Testament that says, Sabbath has been changed to Sunday. We now worship on Sunday. You won't find it. It's not in the New Testament. It's not there. So if you go to the early church, they'll say, see, that's our point. You contradict the Bible. You go against the Bible and the example of the Jewish followers of Jesus who kept Sabbath. And you run to Gentiles who became more and more anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish, right? To spite the Jews to prove your case. I'm going to show you how you prove your case. Catholics, Coptic, Assyrian Church of the East, Orthodox. I'm going to show you how you prove your case. Are you ready now? And no men. You know that same book of Acts says they also worshiped on Sabbath. They also observed the Sabbath. So you just buried yourself, no men. You know that, right? Just because the apostles are observing the Sabbath doesn't mean you as a Gentile keep the Sabbath. But that's your logic. Because if the apostles also gathered on the first day, no, see that? You're setting yourself up. You're setting yourself up. Okay. Danny, will your mother repent for giving birth to a demonic dog like you who's manifesting? Okay. Are you now ready? Are you ready for the answer? Are you ready for the answer? Yeah. And Noah, Morris, you better... Show I'm wrong. I'm going to block you for being stupid enough to think that you're intelligent enough to show I'm wrong. Don't you love me, guys? I make you laugh. I make you cry, insult you. Then I encourage you and lift you up. All for free. You don't get charged. Right? Anyway, now, here's the answer. You say, we do keep the Sabbath. We do keep the Sabbath. But we don't keep Israel's Sabbath. We keep God's Sabbath. What do you mean? Get them to admit that the Sabbath days of Israel and the Sabbath year was modeled after God's Sabbath day. Israel's Sabbath, their Sabbath, Sabbath days and Sabbath years, modeled after God's Sabbath. Where am I getting this from? Let's go now, Exodus 20, Exodus 20, verses 8 to 11. Right? Yep, he is. He's legion. Guys, pay attention now. Here's the answer. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it sacred. Why? You are to labor and do all your work for six days. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to Jehovah your God. You must not do any work, neither you, nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your slave, man, nor your slave girl, nor your domestic animal, nor your foreign resident who is inside your settlements. For in six days, Jehovah made the heavens and the earth the sea and all that is in them, and he began to rest on the Sabbath day. That is why Jehovah blessed the Sabbath day and made it sacred. So you catch it? 
your Sabbath days, Israel, and Sabbath years are modeled after my Sabbath day. My Sabbath day, which is the seventh day when I rested from my work of creation and entered my Sabbath day. Another one, Exodus 31, 12 to 17. Exodus 31, 12 to 17. Only one way. Can you be patient, brother? Jehovah said further to Moses, Jehovah said further to Moses, speak to the Israelites and tell them, especially you are to keep my Sabbaths, plural, not one, for it is a sign between me and you during your generations, right? <clears throat> In order that you may know that I, Jehovah, am sanctifying you. You must keep the Sabbath. You must keep the Sabbath, for it is something holy to you. Whoever profanes it must be put to death. If anyone does any work on it, then that person must be cut off from among his people. Six days work may be done, but on the seventh day is a Sabbath of complete rest. It is something holy to Jehovah. Anyone doing work on the Sabbath day must be put to death. Now notice 16. The Israelites must keep the Sabbath. They must observe the Sabbath during all their generations. It, it is a lasting covenant. Now, why? Because verse 17, guys, verse 17. It is an enduring sign between me and the people of Israel. For in six days, Jehovah made the heavens and the earth. And on the seventh day, he rested and refreshed himself. Now, did everyone get it? Arthur, everyone. Yeah. Israel's Sabbath days and Sabbath years were modeled after God's Sabbath. So what is the true Sabbath day? God's Sabbath or Israel's Sabbath? What is the true original Sabbath day? God's Sabbath or Israel's Sabbath? God. God's, right? God's. Let's go to Genesis 2, verses 1 to 3. Guys, get ready and pay attention. If you get this argument, you're going to refute the Seventh-day Adventists. They don't have a way to refute you. Okay. Genesis 2, verse 1 to 3. Thus the heavens and the earth and everything in them were completed. And by the seventh day, God had completed the work that he had been doing and began to rest on the Sabbath day, seventh day, from all his work that, that he had been doing. From all his work that he had been doing. And God went on to bless the seventh day and to declare it sacred, for on it God has been resting from all the work that he has created, all that he purposed to make. Now, guys, pay attention. Did you notice that in Genesis 1, each of the days had a morning and an evening? There was or morning and evening, day one. There was morning and evening, day two. But for the Sabbath day, the seventh day, the Sabbath day, there was a beginning but no end. There was evening and morning, evening and morning, evening and morning for all the six days. But for the Sabbath day, seventh day, there was no evening and morning. God entered it, but it didn't end. In other words, according to the Bible, when God entered his Sabbath, his Sabbath has been ongoing till this day and will continue to be ongoing until the end of the age where Jesus ushers in a new heaven and new earth. Everyone got that? Yeah. Everyone understand that God's Sabbath is today. God's Sabbath will be tomorrow. God's Sabbath will be the day af after. Every day is God's Sabbath day because when he entered the Sabbath, it started and it's ongoing. When will it end? When Jesus comes and ushers in a new heaven and earth. That's when it ends. Everyone got it? Yeah. Okay. So how does that apply to you and me? Let's go to Hebrews 4. Let's break it down. Verses 1 to 7 and then 8 to 11. Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 7, 8 to 11. Watch here. Hebrews 4, verses 1 to 7. Therefore, since the promise of entering into his rest remains, God has promised, you must enter my rest, which is the word for Sabbath. Let us be on guard for fear. Someone among you seems to fall short of it, fails to enter God's rest. For we have also had the good news declared to us, just as they had, by the word that they heard, right? But the word that they heard did not benefit them. Why didn't it benefit them? Because they were not united by faith with those who listened. So they didn't believe. They didn't believe the gospel was preached to them, so they didn't enter God's rest. So now it's a warning to us. Hey, 
Don't be like them. Gospels preach you. You better believe so you enter his rest. Now watch. Now watch here. Verse 3. For we who have exercised faith do enter into the rest. Let me repeat. You who have believed in Jesus Christ are believing in Jesus Christ. You have entered God's rest the day you believed in him. Just as he has said, so I swore in my anger, they will not enter into my rest, although his works were finished from the founding of the world. So notice it's connecting God's rest with the Sabbath day after he finished creation. That's his rest that you enter by faith. Notice verse 4. For in one place he has said of the seventh day as follows, and God rested on the seventh day from all his works. Now watch. And let's continue reading. Five. And here again he says, they will not enter into my rest. Therefore, since it remains for some to enter into it, and those to whom the good news was first declared did not enter it because of disobedience, he again marks off a certain day by saying long afterward in David's psalm, today, just as it has been said alone, above, said above, today, just as it has been said above, today, today, if you listen to his voice, do not harden your hearts. Guys, did it sink in? The author of Hebrews, tradition as it was Paul, by inspiration of the Holy Spirit, says, God's rest is his Sabbath day. God's rest is his Sabbath day, which he entered into when he finished creation. And God is now inviting you and me, all of us, enter my rest. Come in my rest. Join me in my rest. Well, God, how do we enter? By believing in Jesus, trusting in Jesus, you enter. So when did you enter God's rest? Today, today when you hear the gospel, the day you hear the gospel, the day you believe, that is the day you enter and you remain in it and you stay in it till the end of the age. That's what Hebrews 4 just said. Now let's read 8 to 11. Four, Hebrews 4 verses 8 to 11. Miss Silva, I'm getting there. Miss Silva, be patient. I'm getting there. For if Joshua had led them into a place of rest, God would not afterward have spoken of another day. Right? So now watch here, 9 to 11. So there remains the Sabbath rest for the people of God. Sabbath rest for the people of God. For the man who has entered into what? God's rest. rest. Has also rested from his own works, just as God did from his own. Let us therefore do our utmost to enter into that rest so that no one may fall into the same pattern of disobedience. There's your answer. We are observing the Sabbath. We do keep all Ten Commandments because we're observing the true Sabbath, God's Sabbath, not Israel's Sabbath. I'm a spiritual Jew, not an ethnic Jew. As a spiritual Jew, I observe God's Sabbath, which is the real Sabbath, and Israel's Sabbaths are nothing but shadows. So an ethnic Jew must become a spiritual Jew and enter God's true Sabbath. And the day you enter is the day you believe in the gospel and you remain in it. So today is Sabbath for me. Tomorrow is Sabbath for me. The day after. In other words, the moment you enter God's rest by faith in Christ, you are in the Sabbath every day until the end of the age, until Christ brings in a new heaven and new earth. Why do you think in Romans 14, Christians... Paul said, a person considers one day sacred. Someone else considers all of them sacred. To each his own, as long as you're doing it for Christ. Because Paul understood, we've now entered the true Sabbath. And that Sabbath is today and tomorrow and the next day until Jesus returns. Which is why, though we are now in God's Sabbath day, we can then set aside Sunday to honor Jesus who rose from the dead on Sunday while still observing the Sabbath every day. See, everything ties in and makes perfect sense. Right? Did it make sense? Yep, I got it. Now you know the answer, right? Yes. Praise the Lord, brother. Thank you, sir. Much Anytime, appreciated. Brother. And I'll do that session uh, for you, God willing, this week. Cool. Thank you. Take care, brother. Okay, take care. Amen. God bless you. God bless you too. Thank you. Handsome young man. Sounds like Robbie Zacharias. Okay.
Romans 14, what did Paul say? There are some Christians who think they have to keep one specific day. That's directed, I believe, to the Jews. And he goes, other Christians says, no, all days are the same. Because every day we worship Jesus. Every day we love Jesus. Every day we praise Jesus. And Paul says, you know what? To each his own. If you think every day is the same, amen. But don't look down upon your brother who thinks one day is sacred. We need to set it apart. And if you think one day is sacred, then don't look down upon your brother who thinks all the days are the same because we worship and love Jesus every day and honor him every day. Don't condemn someone else who disagrees with you, but honor the Lord, right? Whether you want to set up one specific day or you consider all days to be the same. So in this view, we Christians are observing the Sabbath every day because we've entered the true Sabbath of God by faith in Christ. So I am a true Sabbath keeper. Not the seven-day Adventists who want to go back to the Jewish way of keeping the Jewish Sabbath. I'm keeping the true Sabbath. And I can still worship on Sunday. Because that's the day the Lord conquered death. And I honor the Lord who conquered death by observing that day in his honor with other brothers and sisters in Christ. Make sense now?